Welcome back to Piney Grove. Brad here. Flying solo again today because Deb is back at home. We've got an aging Brittany Spaniel. We've got two bird dogs, both of them approximately the same age, but one of them is in failing health. And I knew if Deb came up here today and helped me about two or three o'clock, she'd be ready to go home. And about two or three o'clock, that's when I'm getting my second wind and I'm ready to get some more things done. So it's just going to be me today. And I want to plant that strip along those pines way back there that has previously been a food plot, but I've got some Bahia grass and some brown top millet that I ordered from Seed Ranch that came in this week. So I wanna get that planted and I may plant the plot in brown top millet as well. Just uh, something to keep that soil doing something besides just growing grass. Um, and any bit of grass that I till in will increase the organic matter and just basically make that soil better. I want to actually put in my food pots until about November. If you put them in too early, the army worms and bugs like that will eat your, your grains, your rye and wheat and oats. So um, while I got the tiller on, it's kind of a pain to, to put on. I'm going to go ahead and make the most of it. So stay tuned. That's what we're up to today. Okay, so this is what we want to plant today. Between the pines and that line of Bahia, We'll till up to the hose, then move the hose. Do the same thing up there. Till it, lay down some seed, and pack it in with the tractor tire. It's hot today. I don't wanna do much other than drive that tractor. Okay, show you what we got for seed. We got some Pensacola Bahir, or Pensacola Bahia. Haven't opened a box yet, but brown top millet from Seed Ranch. A Walmart Scott's Handy Green 2. And then this thing's worth its weight in gold as well. The Solo Front Pack Spreader. I've had to put a new, one new handle on it, I think, where you adjust the seed. And then my little bar right here that keeps the seed from going to the side, which didn't really do anything. That broke off. But other than that, this thing is seeded. Acres and acres of food pots. I've had it. Let's say eight years. I'm gonna go ahead and get a shot of that because there's a deal with tractors. No, that doesn't happen very often. When I backed in, it's right on that three point hitch bottom and it's barely off on this one. So that's a win. I don't get that that often. Just gotta find the way that works for you. Like that barely misaligned. I should be able to just push this like that. And then kick it. And it's on. Three point pitch. PTO shaft hooked up on a tiller is notoriously a pain. And this one probably be the same. right on. Yeah, like that. Kubota has the worst bottom turnbuckles for a three-point hitch system you'll find. But in the next model up tractor, their Grandel, or their M series, they have a quick connect system down here, but it won't fit on these L series. I've seen people put them on them, but they hit the tire and tires are expensive. So I'm just gonna leave it the way the manufacturer designed it. So what I did there is I tried to get my tiller as level as possible. So I'm just looking at the top of the frame versus the concrete floor. Then I can set my top link angle or length, I guess. So 
I'm lengthening it. Lengthening it. And he'll say, I'm making it longer. And it's shorter. And it's shorter. And it's shorter. Just how I adjust this length tilts the tiller. I think I got it pretty much the way I want it. Thing that's very important when using a tiller is to keep the end bearings clear of debris so I don't know if you can see but right there there's a bunch of wrapping around that end bearing this side over here gets worse because it's against the tree line but right there Right here, all that, all that needs to be cut out. You gotta do that like every couple passes when you're in stuff that's stringy or viney. So I'm gonna cut that stuff out now. You can see what I cut off of there, a bunch of vines. And that bearing on the end is actually warm from all that friction. You can see right there, it's not hot, but it's warm. And these vines get in the seal. And once they compromise the seal, and oil starts leaking, and you ruin your gearbox. Okay, I got both sides, both bearings on each side clear of vines and grass that were wrapped around there both sides were a little warm but if that gets inside the seal and that seal starts leaking you'll be paying your mechanic a hundred dollars an hour you know 250 300 dollars to replace those seals when if you just check them every couple passes if you're in things that will wrap up you'll save yourself a ton of money and your equipment will be available when you need it Okay, folks i think that's a wrap i got that area behind me that you see that's tilled all planted in grass and I, it's not the next day i just grabbed a clean shirt out of the truck after i washed up i was a little bit fragrant so i wanted to uh be clean for the one hour drive home but deb's at home waiting for me so hopefully you enjoyed this video got a lot done today it was a uh, day two of labor day weekend out here on the farm and i feel like uh i feel like i'm getting caught up on things so Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like, please click subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.
Okay, folks, you just watched me plant this last little piece of our pasture. And uh, as a reminder, there's the five or six acres of pasture. And then here's the line right here where the pasture stopped and I had a food plot. But now this is all converted to pasture. This is the brown top millet. I'll come in closer and you'll see the tremendous amount of seeds on the seed head. Get it to focus right there. But it did pretty good. I didn't fertilize it, but it did pretty good. And you'll see there's just millions of seeds out here for the quail and the dove or the songbirds or whatever else wants to utilize it. But as this dies off, and we're, looking, we're in mid-October now, as this uh, matures, browns, and dies off, the bahia grass will come up. And as I look in here closer, and it won't be picked up by the camera, but as I look in here closer, I can see that uh, I do have some Bahia grass coming up. Not, not as much as I would like, but it always surprises you. It comes up really slow and really spindly. And then a year later, you know, it, it's looking like this. So I would call that a success. We would like to dedicate this video to Gunner and uh, the 11 years that we shared with him. He was such a great dog and uh, we'll miss him or we do miss him. And, we, and we'll always love him. And he was such an integral part of our family. You know, between him and Bailey, our other Brittany Spaniel, um, it was just, uh, you know, fun to watch, fun to play with. But uh, in some good news, I did get a text today and some pictures. Uh, my wife, despite us saying we weren't going to look for another dog, has found a rescue Brittany. And if I know Deb, like I know Deb, uh, there's probably, that rescue Brittany is probably in our house when I get home. So, um, here you go, here's some video and some footage of Gunner. Um, we'll see you again, Gunner. What'd you do? In there. Okay, move, sit. You know where it's at. Yeah.